All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are on the back page of our 5.7 review. Um, I'm going to do two inequalities with you, and then I'm going to show you a word problem, which basically the word problems are going to be a bunch of calculator tricks, all right, and it will just be knowing how to push a few buttons. So um, we'll, we'll get to that in just a moment. All right, <clears throat> y is greater than x squared plus 3x. Again, we kind of did this the other day. I've got two xy charts going on here. This is for the first one. I'll call this A. I'll call this B. All right. Um, and so now, if I do my negative B over 2A, it's negative 3 over 2 times 1. So negative 3 halves, or negative 1.5. All right. All right, and we're going to build around this. Back to negative 2, forward negative 1, negative 3, and then 0. If I plug all this stuff in, all right, um, let's see here, I got negative 1.5 squared oops, plus 3 times negative 1.5 gives me negative 2.25 if I plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1 plus 3 times negative 1 is 1 minus 3 which is negative 2 and 0 is 0 <coughs> so I take a look at this one, all right, negative 1.5 is back here, down negative 2.25. Uh, let's see here, negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, 0, 0, negative 3, 0. Um, it's greater than, so I'm going to do a dashed line in this one. Okay, good. I'm going to hold off shading. Greater than means I'm going to shade inside of it because it's above it. Um, I'll get to that in just a moment. For my second one, xy, uh, negative b would be negative negative 1 divided by 2 times negative 2. So 1 over negative 4. <coughs> okay, so negative 1 fourth. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, I go back 1, I'd be negative 1.25. Back again, negative 2.25. If I go forward, this would get me 2.75. Forward again, 1.75. We did one like this on the front page. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. So I got negative 2, negative 0.25 squared, minus negative 0.25, plus 1. So 1.125. Going to change this to 0.75. Get rid of this uh, negative sign. Okay. Negative 0.875. And finally, um, 6.875. Alright, so negative 0.5 is back here, and then up 1.25, roughly around here. Negative 1.25 is negative 0.875. That means 0.75 is right here. And then 1.75 is negative 7, roughly. A little bit below it. Or above it rather. And then the same thing over here. 2.25. Alright. So this again is a dash line. Now, this one right here I'm shading above, and this one right here I'm shading below it. So I'm just going to shade the part in the middle where they meet. Okay. Now we could do the, the up and down, left and right. Um, you can do that absolutely. This makes it a little bit cleaner. It's totally your call. Uh, if you'd like to see the other way to say the word, I will show you in the front board. Okay? <clears throat> Numero siés. Okay? Uh, part A and B, much the same. I know this is a lot of repetition, all right? But if there's any part of this that you're not getting, you have to let me know, all right? Please, I will gladly go into more problems with you, whatever you need. Um, just make sure you're asking questions. The first one's going to be 0. Simple enough. 0, 0. Plug a 1 there, it's negative 3. Plug a 2 in there, it's negative 12. 
because 2 squared is 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Flip it up. Two zero zeros right here. One negative three is down here. Same thing over here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just leave that for now because negative 12 is way down here. All right. The second one for our B, X, Y again. We can do negative B. Well, notice again, I don't have an X here. So that's the easy problem. That means your, your vertex is zero, zero. Um, build around it. Plug in zero, I get negative five for this one though. Plug in a one. Um, negative five minus one half is negative 5.5. If I plug a two in, two squared is four times negative one half would be negative two. That gives me negative seven. If you're ever stuck on that two, use the calculator, okay? It, it will help you immensely. Zero, negative five, down here. Um, one, negative 5.5. Same thing over here, and then two negative seven. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is going to be a filled-in one. All right, so it's less than this one. That means it's inside of here, but it's greater than this one. So let me show you the, the up and down thing. For this one, it would be like this. And then for this one, it would be all of this. So, I mean, I could color it all in, but you just want, I want you to note that it's just everything inside of this part right here. Okay. Which I know is kind of a little funky, but nothing too crazy. All right. Okay. <clears throat> now, saw timber is a term for trees that are suitable for sawing into lumber for sawing the lumber plywood and other products for the years 1983 to 1995 not that year that'd be a really long time the unit value y in 1994 dollars per million forward feet of one type of saw timber harvest in california can be modeled by y equals point or 0 0.125 x squared that is 569 x plus 848 thousand and your terms are between 400 and 2200 for your x um, which is the number of the volume of timber harvested for what harvest timber volumes is the value of timber at least 400,000 per, uh, per million board feet, all right? So what you could do here is a few different things. Um, due to the fact that we're only doing graphing, I'm going to hold off on showing you guys quadratic formula. It's not too bad, but there's a trick you can do in the calculator which makes your life a lot easier. So you want to know what values, all right, it equals this, or I mean it's at least this. So the first thing I'm going to do is graph my function. I'm going to graph this, okay, the y equals part, not the 400 through that. I'll get to that in a minute. So I'm going to go to y equals. So I'm going to type this in. Totally just did the problem before I did this. I won't tell anybody. So 0.125x squared, okay, um, minus 569x plus 848,000. And you'll notice I have it all typed in, and it'll all look good, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hit graph. Now, this is something I want to show you first. It, when you first graph this, this is what it looks like. Okay? And it's just normal right there. Now, what you have to do is you have to learn to change the window. There's a window button right here. All right? Now, to save a little bit of time, um, my x min, I'll leave it negative 10. And my x max, all right, I need to make it really, really big. Now, the thing is, you're going to have to learn to try this on your own. So you could try something like 100, okay, and you hit graph, and nothing's going to change. And you just have to keep playing with it. Um, I'll try my best to give you guys better parameters as you get through this, because it took me a little while, and I came up with 2200, okay? And eventually you're going to see it pop over to the right. Oops, well, let me change my Y values too. Y min, Y max. The y max I'm looking for is 700,000, and I get this really nice long graph. Okay, and that's all well and good. So what this is saying, all right, y is the value of your timber, and x is like how much timber you've used, all right, and they want it between 400 and 2,200. So 
it says for what harvest timber volumes is the value of timber at least 400,000 per million board. Well, what we're going to do here is it's going to save you a lot of time. I'm going to go back to y equals and I'm going to type in for my second y 400,000. Okay, and when I hit graph, you're going to see that a line goes flying across. This is the value of 400,000. What we want to know is what are the x values from here back because this is the values above 400,000. All right, so it would be very, very helpful to me to find out what this point is. Now, get ready to find out one of the most useful things about this calculator ever. I want to know where these two lines intersect. I can hit second, trace. And what button do you think would show me where they intersect? Please don't think too hard about this. Number five, hit enter, enter, enter. And it tells me the point. 1,012.60 and 400,000. Well, that's all well and good, all right? This is the one I'm after. Because saying what values of x, what volumes do I have that make it at least 400,000? Well, please note we started at 400,000, right? So it's from 400, I'm sorry, not 400,000, just 400. From 400 to this. are the volumes where it's at least 400,000, okay? Because that's everything above that line. Um, and it's just a few button pushes, okay? I think the hardest part there is figuring out your, your window, which I, which I may be helping you guys with. Lastly, what happens to the unit volume of the timber as the volume harvest increases? Why would you expect this to happen? See this dropping? Why do you think that's happening? Now, I know this is more economics than anything, but I think it has something to do with supply and demand all right the more you have of a product the less it is worth all right like for example if um let's say you had an abundance of umbrellas i'm going really really tangent here but abundance of umbrellas okay and you know it's Everyone's got an umbrella. Well, eventually your market kind of sells out. You can't just keep selling umbrellas. However, if you only have, like, say, 100 umbrellas for a 500 population and it's a really rainy season, people are going to be going nuts for umbrellas. So you can make, you can jack the price of the umbrella up. So the same thing's going on here. Um, the more you have of your lumber, the less it's needed. All right. Um, the less you have it, the more people want it, the more they're willing to pay. So it's an interesting little side thing to economics, but um, hopefully it helps a little bit. We, I will try my best. I will actually definitely get you guys another problem like this tomorrow to make sure you see at least two of them before we do anything like on a quiz on this, okay? So, but please take your time with this. Um, yeah, let me know if we can help you with anything. Keep working on these graphs. These graphs are important, all right? Um, they will help you immensely, all right? And as far as this goes, we are going to get very, very good with the calculator as the year goes on. Just keep trying, keep asking questions, and as always, good luck. We're all counting on you.